And this episode is sponsored by Juicy Crab, also known as my absolute favorite seafood seasoning right now. You can grab yours via the link in my description box. Please give it a try. It is absolutely phenomenal on seafood boils. I've used it on my king crab leg episode as well as my lobster roll episode. This stuff is good on everything, guys. I even use it in my seafood stuffing, and man, I just can't say enough about it. So grab yours today via the link in my description box. You can hit their website. It's super easy to check out as you can see right here and it's up to 36 percent off right now so don't waste any time go ahead and visit the website order your juicy crab seasoning and make delicious seafood at home make yourself a seafood boil after the holidays and just know when people think seafood they think juicy crab what's up guys welcome back now i know it's thanksgiving but eventually you're gonna get tired of those leftovers and i have a recipe that you guys need to try today i'll be showing you how to make this creamy garlic parm chicken pasta but before we do that please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well all right guys meet me in the kitchen let's make it happen first things first we're gonna make some roasted garlic for this pasta for that you're gonna need one head of roasted garlic we're gonna chop the top off like you see me doing right here we're going to pop this in a 400 degree oven for about 40 minutes until it's roasted and delicious. Roasted garlic really is a cheat code to elevate your dishes, so give this a try if you never have before. It's super easy. You just want to peel some of the skin off like you see me doing right here. You can throw that in the trash. Then you need some aluminum foil, a little olive oil, and some salt and pepper. Or in this case, a little bit of my all-purpose seasoning. If you haven't tried that yet, you can get yours via the link in my description box. There's a discount code for you there as well for Black Friday. So once your garlic is prepped, oiled, and seasoned, we're gonna wrap it tightly in that aluminum foil and pop it in a 400 degree oven for exactly 40 minutes. It'll come out perfect every single time. Now we're moving on to our chicken. Here I have some chicken tenders that we're also gonna season with all purpose seasoning. If you don't have that guys, just use a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, or whatever seasoning you like on your poultry. We're also gonna go in with some Cajun or Creole seasoning. Next, we're going in with a teaspoon or two of hot sauce, depending on how spicy you want this to be. Then we're going in with some cayenne pepper as well, just to kick up the heat a little bit more. Get in there with your hands and work in all that seasoning into the chicken. You can do this overnight if you want to, or just 30 minutes before you start cooking is fine as well. Now we're going in with about a quart of buttermilk. Buttermilk does a couple things here, guys. It adds a little bit of flavor, and also the acid in the buttermilk helps to tenderize and break down the muscle fibers in the chicken. So just get in there with your hands, give that a good mix, and place that in the fridge. And now we're going to get started on our breading. So we have two cups of all-purpose flour, one packet of sassone, some cayenne pepper, some all-purpose seasoning or salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Really, you can use whatever seasoning you like on your chicken. Just get in there with a spoon or a fork and mix all that together. I like to taste the flour to make sure that it's adequately seasoned. Once it is, you can set that aside and then we're gonna get started on our garlic parm sauce. So we're gonna need one stick of butter. I like Kerrygold because it's my favorite butter. It's delicious and it's from grass-fed cows, so it's a little bit better for you. As always, guys, the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. We're gonna cut that butter in half because half of that's going in the microwave. We're also gonna dice up this parsley. This is curly leaf parsley, but any parsley will work just fine. To half a stick of melted butter, you wanna add a half stick of room temperature butter. This is a technique that I like to use for the right consistency for my sauce. Trust me on this one, just give it a try. We're also gonna grate in some fresh garlic. It's garlic parm sauce after all, and we need a nice bit of garlic flavor in there. You can also supplement with a little garlic paste or minced garlic from the store. And next we're adding in some of that diced parsley. You want to save some of that for garnish later. We're also going in with a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And then finally just season to taste with a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder or whatever seasoning you want to add in here. And then just get in there with your rubber spatula and mix until everything is well combined. Once it is, you can set that aside until we need it later for our chicken tenders. Oh man, this sauce is going to be good guys. Can't wait for you guys to try this recipe. Now we're going to add some cheese to the party. So we're going to grate about two cups of shredded mozzarella. That's going to go into our pasta sauce and make this nice and cheesy. And then my friends, we're going to add some sun-dried tomatoes to the mix. We also need to dice up one onion and we're going to add about a quarter cup of those sun-dried tomatoes to the sauce as well. For the last part of our prep work, we need to boil our pasta noodles. So I like to salt my pasta water heavily. I'm using cavatappi noodles for this recipe because I like them, but you can use whatever noodles you prefer. Once you add your noodles to that salted pasta water, get in there with a spoon or a fork and stir them around. Just ensure they don't stick to each other or stick to the bottom of your pot. 
and then just boil them to package instructions and drain them off. But you do want to save one cup of pasta water. And now my friends is on to the fun part. We're we'll get started on our pasta sauce. First and foremost, we need to fry up four pieces of bacon on medium heat, giving it time for that bacon fat to really render from the bacon. We're going to use that bacon fat as the foundation of flavor for our roux. So once the bacon is right where you want it, go ahead and remove it, place it on a paper towel, turn the heat down to medium low, and then we're going to saute that onion in that bacon fat. That's going to take about three or four minutes for the onion to get tender. Your house is going to be smelling absolutely amazing. And then we're going in with the sun-dried tomatoes. Give that a mix. Make sure everything is well combined and nothing sticking to the bottom of your fryer. We're still working over medium or medium low heat here. We're not in a rush. Now we're going in with that roasted garlic. Tons of flavor in this pasta, guys. I cannot wait for you guys to give this recipe a try. This is one of those days I was just in the kitchen kind of coming up with stuff, and this recipe went viral on Instagram, so I thought to myself I better add this to YouTube for you guys as well. Now we're going in with two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and a little bit of my all-purpose seasoning. The flour is going to mix with that bacon fat and create a roux, which is going to be the thickening agent for our pasta sauce. We're also going to add some red pepper flakes here for just a little bit of heat. You could add more or less depending on your spice tolerance. You want to work in that flour and cook off the raw flour taste. That takes about two or three minutes. We're still working on medium heat here, and then we're going to add in our cream. Bring that up to a boil, and then we're going to reduce that down to a simmer. Get in there with your rubber spatula just to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom or sticking to the sides. We don't want anything to burn. Once you reach a boil like this, we're going to add in our spinach. Now, this may look like a lot of spinach, but it is the winter time now, and shrinkage is real. All jokes aside, guys, add about two or three cups of fresh spinach or as much as you like. You can cover this with a lid to allow that spinach to cook down a bit. Once that spinach is cooked down, we're going to go ahead and give everything a good mix. Make sure the spinach is evenly distributed throughout the sauce. Then we're going to chop up that bacon from earlier and add that back to the sauce as well. It's an absolute flavor party in there right now. As you can see, I also added a little bit of heavy cream to the mix as well, just to thin the sauce a little bit. You may need to do that occasionally if the sauce gets too thick on you. And now it's time to cheese this up. So we're going in with some mozzarella cheese. We're working over medium low heat now. We want that cheese to melt beautifully and stay nice and smooth, smoother than a half day at school. Now we're going to add in the cavatappi noodles, season that up with a little all purpose seasoning along with some red pepper flakes. Don't forget to save a little bit of that pasta water to thin things out a little bit later. We want those noodles to finish cooking in the sauce and absorb all that flavor. Oh my goodness, that looks good. Now, if you don't want to add any chicken to this, you could eat this pasta just like this, but we are going to take this over the top and fry us up some chicken tenders. So from the buttermilk, we're going into that seasoned flour. Get in there with your hands and make sure that the chicken tender is well coated in that flour. Don't be a dummy like me and use a really small bowl for whatever reason. We're going to make it work though. Now we're going to add that to a plate to let that flour have some time to really adhere to the chicken. Once our oil gets up to 350 degrees, we're going to drop that chicken into the oil very carefully. Always lay the chicken away from you to avoid splatter. And after five to six minutes, the chicken should be just about done. Once it's golden brown and crispy and 165 degrees internal temperature, you know that the chicken is done. Say it with me guys, looking good. We're gonna rewarm that sauce that we're gonna dip our chicken tenders into. That garlic parm sauce is packed with flavor. Oh man, this is really gonna take it over the top. If you don't wanna use chicken tenders guys, you can plate this up with salmon or whatever your favorite protein is. But this is just how I came up with it and it came together so good. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. Let me know how it turns out. That piece was good. Now we're going to plate this up, get ourselves a trademark money shot, go on down with that fried chicken. Going to top it with a little bit more grated Parmesan cheese, because why the hell not? And then, my friends, it's almost time for me to get in there for a taste test. Where is my fork? After you're tired of all that Thanksgiving food, this is going to be what you need right here. Oh my goodness, look at that. Going in for the taste test, here's the moment of truth. I think we know how this one turned out. You guys have got to give this recipe a try. Definitely a fork drop. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you give your boy a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.